Hi, my name's Vince Sheehan and um, I'd like to talk about Euro 2020. I've just watched the whole tournament every minute of every game and, uh, you know, I just loved watching it, the whole thing. I'm not a massive football expert or anything like that, but I always like watching the uh, international competitions, the Euros, the World Cup. I watched uh, Euro 96 on repeat last year, did a video on that. And it's just been such a joy to watch uh, such quality football, even if the crowds weren't completely back and even if it was spread over various countries, uh, stretching as far as Azerbaijan, um, it was still a great tournament. Postponed a year, of course, because of COVID. Now, um, you've got to say Italy completely dominated the competition. They were definitely worthy champions. Um, from their first game against Turkey, right to the final against England, they were just superb. And, um, and the other big teams, I mean, like England did really well to get to a final. I mean, being an England fan myself, it was upsetting to lose on penalties. It was also upsetting to see the misbehaviour and hooliganism of some fans as well, uh, an embarrassment. But um, England, yeah, they did really well. Um, and other teams, the, the so-called big teams, France, I mean, they perhaps underperformed a bit. Germany certainly underperformed. Spain kind of grew in the competition. Um, getting all the way to the semis, being knocked out by Italy. Um, the Netherlands kind of looked very dangerous in the group stages, but were knocked out in the last 16. So um, perhaps what was more noticeable about this tournament were the teams slightly under the biggest teams, teams like Denmark. Now Denmark, of course, were galvanized by the terrible event which will be forever remembered with this competition, that of the collapse of Christian Eriksen in their first game against Finland in Copenhagen. And uh, it was such a traumatic thing to see unfold live. But it's also very inspiring to see his teammates rally round him, the CPR they performed on him, Kasper Schmeichel comforting Eriksen's wife. Um, and it was just so amazing to see him okay, um, or at least conscious, um, uh, you know, a bit later on, pictures of him conscious. And that kind of really gave this tournament, in a weird way, this kind of uh, sense of gravitas, a sense of uh, unity, a, a sense of togetherness, you know, the, the kind of the swell of good feeling and prayers, best wishes for Ericsson seem to pull the whole competition together. Um, of course, it was a terrible and awful event, but thank God he's alive, you know. And uh, But it certainly galvanised the Danish team and they just went all the way to the semis. They played some brilliant football, such a, a great uh, team spirit. And I suppose other slightly lesser known, uh, lesser, uh, slightly um, lesser regarded teams, I guess you'd, you'd say, um, like Switzerland. I mean, they, they had a great competition. Um, you know, they, again, this sense of team spirit working together, uh, just fighting for every ball as a unit. They were really inspiring, actually, particularly as the tournament uh, progressed. Um, Austria had a good tournament. Um, Sweden, uh, the Czech Republic, all these teams which perhaps are a little but traditionally seen a little below the really big teams I think had, a, had really good tournaments. And you know there were some great goals as well. Patrick Schick for the Czech Republic against um, Scotland, he scored this, you know, perhaps the goal of the tournament from beyond the halfway line. Um, Paul Pogba scored a great goal for France uh, in that thrilling game uh, when they were knocked out by Switzerland in penalties. Um, 
I mean, that was a fantastic game. And actually, that day was fantastic because the earlier game, Croatia versus Spain, was amazing as well. I think eight goals were scored before Spain finally beat Croatia um, and progressed into the quarterfinals. But um, likewise, the France-Switzerland game had everything. I mean, that day was just fantastic. Um, but Modric for Croatia scored a great goal. You know, that th there were some terrific goals scored in this tournament. And there's some really exciting games. Um, Belgium versus Italy uh, in at the, uh, the quarterfinal. That was a really good game. Um, and Belgium, you know, again, uh, their so-called golden generation has yet to achieve a trophy. You know, Group F, the so-called group of death, I mean, that was interesting. Um, Portugal, France, Germany and Hungary. And Hungary were a real surprise package. I mean, they, were, they really uh, gave each of those footballing giants a terrific game. And, uh, you know, they, I think they were unlucky not to go through to the last 16. That last day of that group, um, the last day of those group matches was so thrilling to see the different permutations. Suddenly Portugal are out and then it was Hungary and then it was Germany, etc. Ronaldo, still prolific goal scorer, even though Portugal perhaps underachieved. You have to say Italy were just fantastic, as I said, from the first kick to the last kick. Um, Insignia scored an amazing goal in the, the quarter-final against Belgium. Chiellini, of course, just a star in defence, 36 years old, but, and Bonici, such great partnership there. And they, they seem so um, likeable and charismatic, don't they? Spinazzola, a great player, um, he was injured eventually. But the list goes on, Chiesa, Italy, their their goalkeeper as well, Donna Roma, fantastic goalkeeper. So young, such a star already. So yeah, Euro 2020, great tournament, um, you know, and so many enjoyable games. And the best team definitely won. Thanks for watching, bye.